five romantic villages on the Italian west coast of Liguria are known as Cinque Terra. Once a hard-to-reach paradise between heaven and earth, now easily accessible by train. Our journey begins in Levanto. One of the most popular resorts of the eponymous Riviera shows off Sant'Andrea Parish Church on Old Town Hill. The interior of the early Gothic columned basilica has the characteristics of its Genoese models. Simple columns and a circular arch and a pulpit carved in marble. Also, the white altar with a small pipe organ in the background is a beguiling sight. The silence says it all. Many come here to explore the region a peaceful area, and now a small town. The Piazza Cavour is at the centre, and the Loggia del Comune is reminiscent of the city's medieval history. The museum contains some interesting exhibits. The last remnants of the city wall and its defensive towers are mainly to be found in the southern part of the old town. The church tower can be seen from almost everywhere. Its chimes always on time. The view of Levanto from its environs indicates the lushness of its vegetation. And here, also situated on the hill, was once the city wall, of which much of its defensive tower has been preserved. The small town had to protect itself from the landside, as the Saracens attempted to invade it from the mountain slopes. Higher, beyond the Sant'Andrea church, is the late Gothic San Giorgio castle. The Genoese built both the castle and tower to defend city and port. The Genoese were experienced both as a sea power as well as defenders of their cities. rocky bays and long stretches of beach are ideal for swimming and bathing. A scenic gem framed by hills. There's also a railway nearby. It provides a convenient connection to the villages of Cinque Terre. in little time. Monterosso al Mare is the first and largest of the five villages that comprise Cinque Terre on the route south. It extends across two bays and two districts, separated by a rock. The modern district of Figina has a long waterfront promenade, a well-kept sandy beach 
a good range of accommodation and a Neptune of stone. The district separating Cristoforo Hill is accessed via a tunnel. There are many beautiful views of the sea. This is the old district, along with a view of the small harbour beach and railway, the lines of which separate the beach from the old town. hill, a capuchin monk. He points to the monastery church, which was built in 1619 and dedicated to St. Francis of Assisi. Here the monks found a wonderful place for prayer and contemplation. The view back to the old town shows how the original Monterosso is embedded within this hollow. Above the monastery are the ruins of a Genoese fortress from which the surrounding area can be seen. In the centre of the old town, narrow streets lead uphill between colourful buildings, with defensive walls and tower. Despite tourism, the rustic ambience has been well preserved, and the small shops tastefully blend in with the local scenery. The San Giovanni Battista Parish Church is attached behind a loggia. It was built by the Genoese and dedicated to St. John the Baptist, patron saint of Genoa. The interior was recently rebuilt according to Baroque design. Adjacent, a black and white striped facade catches the eye. The Church of Pirates and the Dead. It is said that pirates financed its construction in order to appease their conscience. These were wild times, but faith always dominated. We continue by train through tunnels and along the coast to our next Cinque Terre destination. There's so little space in the station that most of the carriages come to a halt in the tunnel. is Vernazza, which is considered to be the most beautiful of the five villages, mainly because of its location within a splendid bay. Tourists walk from the station down the narrow main street to the tiny harbour. At the harbour, the small square is dominated by a large and tight array of restaurant tables. It's a wonderful sight, and the port ends with the Santa Margarita di Antiochia church. Colourful buildings are densely packed together on the slopes, joined by steep and narrow steps. 
The Santa Margarita Church is connected with St. Margaret, whose finger bones were reportedly washed ashore here, lost, then found again. A pier protects the small natural harbour and provides anchorage for privately owned boats. From the pier, steep steps lead up to the top of a huge rock that is covered with buildings. On each side of the village, the banks are rocky and slope steeply into the sea. Vernazza was once only accessible from the water. Today, numerous ships travel along the coast, mainly taking tourists from place to place. The first view from the harbour is a magnificent sight. It once attracted both Sarazenes and pirates. From the outermost crag and the fortress tower, Vernazza, with its vines and cliffs, are picture postcard perfect. From these unique natural rocks, both the hinterland and coast are visible. This unspoiled scenery and wonderful views exemplify the captivating appeal of Cinque Terre. And Vernazza has both to offer in a fantastic location. We again travel by train whose tracks pass through a long tunnel to our next Cinque Terre port of call. It is one of 32 tunnels that were built for the entire distance from Genoa La Spezia. Cornelia has no direct access to the sea, but extends along a massive rocky plateau about 100 meters above the sea. On its hilly outskirts is the San Pietro church built in 1334 with an elegant decorated facade and a rose window of Carrara marble. In contrast to the Gothic style of its exterior, the interior is mainly Baroque, but adapted to Genoese design. The villagers are very religious and so the church is well furnished and in tip-top order. The outer side walls indicate that it was built on the remains of an 11th century chapel. San Pietro faces the open sea and adjacent is a beautifully decorated home of a wealthy family. The villagers earn their living from the cultivation of fruit and vegetables, as well as viniculture.
In the narrow streets of the old town, the close-packed buildings leave little or no space for a view. Only an occasional glimpse above the rooftops. Passing the stone gates of various defensive towers, we arrive at the village's small main square, which contains several parasol-covered tables. This is the Santa Catarina Chapel, a plain and simple building. Here too, the buildings are densely packed together and painted in bright colours. From a distance, Cornelia seems to hover above the sea, as it looks down amicably at the other villages of Cinque Terre. Down below, the train station. Again, we travel by train to our next coastal destination. The railway is ideal for this location and extremely popular. From the platform, the first buildings can be seen set within the rock. The village's isolation has helped to preserve it from modern development. The beauty of Manarola is not obvious at first glance. From the station, a narrow street leads down towards the village. Fishermen continue to earn their living here and there are holiday apartments as well as several souvenir shops that satisfy the demands of the many tourists who visit. The upper section of the village contains a fine terrace that offers splendid views, as well as the San Lorenzo Church. Opposite, there's a square and a freestanding bell tower that attracts visitors to the church. Its interior is adorned with a number of works that date back to the 15th century. Side altars with saints, large oil paintings, and a winged altar with images of saints. Fishing boats are parked in the lanes and high buildings crop the view on both sides. Higher up, it's more peaceful and Manarola's buildings look like piled up bricks that reach down towards the sea. The village looks like a cubist painting and it's not surprising that it has the nickname of the Painter's Village of Cinque Terre. There's also a fine view of both the village and seashore from the cemetery above the small harbour. There's a labyrinth of winding steps. One wrong turn and it's necessary to go back to the starting point and try again. Below, the sea. And above, vineyards. And in between, densely packed slopes and a feeling of communal living.
what today is a picturesque village, was once a community struggling to survive with a degree of independence. The steps, terraces and mule tracks are now popular tourist destinations far removed from their original purpose. Now, our next stop. The train transports us punctually to the fifth of the Cinque Terre villages. This station is also very well adapted to the local environment and is squeezed in between two tunnels. We've arrived at Rio Maggiore. A mighty ledge separates the station from the village. Watchtowers still bear witness to its checkered past. According to legend, it was founded in the 8th century by Greeks who escaped to Italy from persecution by Byzantine Emperor Leo III. Just beyond the small castello on the hill, is the Cappella di San Rocco, which was founded in 1480 and contains only one room. There is also written evidence that this location once belonged to the powerful house of Fichy, from which Pope Innocence IV came. The church of San Giovanni Battista was built in 1350. Three corridors separated by columns lead past a pulpit that was erected in 1530. And in front of the Baroque main altar is a wooden crucifix. Flanked by artistic side altars. Starting at the church, a labyrinth of narrow streets and stone steps crisscross over two slopes. Again and again, this network of archways and stairs comes back to the main street, which is lined by picturesque shops, cafes and restaurants. From above, there's a colourful tangle of unusually elevated and densely packed buildings. Floor after floor piled up to make practical and efficient use of every spare metre of the valley. Rio Maggiore was once only accessible from the sea or by pathway through the local landscape. The Via Colombo leads from the mountainside to a small harbour bay. The colourful buildings were almost glued to the cliffs right up to the seashore. The remaining space leaves no room for boats. Travelling by train from village to village is a relaxing way in which to enjoy the sights and provides exceptional views from the cliffs to the sea and villages. In just a few minutes, it's possible to visit these colourful coastal villages that were formerly difficult to access from the outside world. Mm -hmm. 